It's July 6th, and my name is Mike Knigge. I am your host, and I'd like to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to talk about photography at Walt Disney World Resorts. Um, before we begin, though, I will touch on a little bit of news, uh, something that's happened over the last week. Um, Walt Disney World has announced that they are going to be closing two attractions at the uh, Disney Hollywood Studios Park. Um, a lot of you may know or may not know, uh, the park is getting ready to be reimagined. Uh, they're going to strip the name and change it. They're going to change the whole theme to the park. Uh, there's rumors of a Cars Land, a Star Wars Land. There's also rumors of a Pixar Land coming to it. So it's going to be a completely new thing once it's said and done with. But in that process, they're looking at uh, attractions and rides that are kind of dated and no longer relevant or no longer interesting to the general public. So, um, although these two attractions that they're getting ready to remove are, you know, popular with me, one of them being because I'm a, you know, a history buff, um, overall they're not. Uh, these two attractions are the uh, Animation Academy and One Man's Dream. Um, for those who don't know what it is, what either of those attractions are, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what they're all about. Um, One Man's Dream is essentially a uh, self-guided tour uh, through the life of Walt Disney. Uh, it's about 15-20 minutes, give or take, depending on how long you spend, like I said, self-guided. Um, but basically it just goes from his birth in Chicago, Illinois, uh, to his childhood in Marceline, Missouri. Uh, which, incidentally, for those uh, who have been to Disneyland in California, uh, anybody who's been to the Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom, uh, Main Street USA is themed after his hometown in Marceline, uh, Missouri. So it was his idea of the quintessential Main Street in the in USA. So just a little tidbit, but back to the point, and that was a tangent. Uh, you know, it starts with his birth, Early childhood uh, goes through the uh, creation of the Walt Disney Company, and even has a model of the California Adventure Park. Um, the uh, the, ro the attraction rather has, I believe, 400 different artifacts from his past, including things like his uh, school desk from when he was in second grade, and um, a multi-plane camera, uh, one that they actually used in one of the uh, animations uh, called the Old Mill. Um, the other uh, attraction is uh, Animation Academy. Uh, the intent behind it was is that people go in and see what animating characters was all about, hand-drawn characters, and they could actually see the digi uh, Disney uh, artists creating some of these characters for the movies, like Mushu and, and Simba and so on and so forth. Um, the whole idea was people could see behind the magic and see how it's actually done. Uh, there was another piece to it where you could actually go in and a uh, Disney artist would teach you how to create a character on paper. Each of you had your own little lighted desk and he would walk you through the steps, he or she would walk you through the steps of creating a character. And each time you went in it would be a different character and you get to keep the picture you drew. Um, these were all really cool features in the Animation Academy, but the reality is, is Disney is moving away from hand-drawn work and it's going squarely into digital work and digital work only. So with there not being live animators there to watch um, and with the, the both attractions becoming kind of dated uh, and the fact that they needed space for this reimagined park, uh, they decided that Ju July 12th will be the day that they close those two attractions. They are side by side and they have promised that there is a new traction in the works that's gonna go into that slot where those two attractions currently take. Um, so for those who liked both these attractions, like myself, um, it's kind of heartbreaking, but keep in mind, these Imagineers are experts at what they do. So whatever they're coming up with to put in that hole, I'm certain it's gonna be amazing. And over the next couple of years, as we start getting details as to what uh, this reimagined version of Disney Hollywood Studios is gonna be, I can, I, I am excited and I cannot begin to tell you how cool it's going to be when they start r running out these uh, new details. I mean, there's so many parks out there that Disney has, uh, both uh, here at home and abroad, that have attractions that are just amazing that we don't necessarily see here. Uh, the, the, the sky is the limit with this park, so it's going to be really awesome to see as this stuff starts coming out. 
Um, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of what this episode is all about. We're talking about photography at Walt Disney World. Uh, it's a subject I happen to like a lot. Um, I do a lot of photography on my own. I enjoy it. I'm no by, by no means a professional, um, but I have fun with it. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, and hopefully, I can give you guys some hints and whatnot to help you at the parks. So uh, let me start by this. Before we get into the cameras, um, it's not about the camera. Okay. This is something that a lot of people don't necessarily grasp. It, you know, you don't have to have the most expensive camera in the world. You don't have to have the most updated camera in the world. Okay, it's not about the camera. It's about the person behind the camera. Okay, uh, this camera right here, for example, it's older. It's a, it's about seven years old. Um, most people would say, "Wow, that thing's out of date." But you know what? I can still take great pictures with that. Seven years ago, I took great pictures with that. I can still take great pictures with it. It has nothing to do necessarily with the camera. Yeah, it's nice that you know, you can have all the bells and whistles, but it's not necessary. Uh, and every camera has its positives and negatives. Um, let's look at these cameras, for example. Um, this is a film SLR, which stands for uh, single lens reflex. This is a digital SLR. In other words, digital sing single lens reflex. These are cameras you see your upper amateurs and professionals type using. Um, you know, these right here are your point and shoot types. This is where anybody can do it. They actually assist you in how to do it. Um, they all have their ups and downs. They all have their positives and their negatives. Um, your single lens reflexes, both digital and film, uh, they're great for taking images uh, in general. Um, they have their manual modes. Um, you have more accessory options you can do with them. You can change lens types. The glass on them, which is very important in picture taking, is always superb. Well, no matter what brand you get. I know I've got two Nikons here because I'm a Nikon guy. But Canon makes fantastic glass too. They make great cameras. Um, I just happen to be a Nikon guy. Grew up with it. So um, you've got great options in the SLRs. Uh, but they're also a lot more complicated. And they're also heavy. Now, think about walking through a Walt Disney World, you know, in the middle of the heat and the humidity, and you're hauling that all day long. Yes, you'll get amazing pictures with it, but they're heavy. Um, another factor in it uh, is something that the camera that you can't see because you're filming with it. Uh, I, it's a, the camera I'm filming with is a point and shoot. Um, it gets great quality images, hence the reason why I'm using it. And it's also a waterproof one, um, whereas these, none of these cameras are waterproof. Uh, you can get cases for them to protect them and make them waterproof, but that's added weight. So when you're looking at these SLRs, you're adding even more weight to this camera. You know, right now, like last last time I went to Disney, and shortly I'll show pictures from that trip, um, I took this camera, the Nikon D90, which is, in, at the time, they were still using, the PhotoPass photographers there, the professional photographers were using this camera. I took this camera and my BlackBerry with me. Those are the, the two mediums I took pictures with. Um... After the first day at Animal Kingdom, I took this, I stopped taking it. I love this camera. It's a, it takes wonderful images, but it's heavy. Really heavy. So, I stopped carrying it. It's a family trip. It's not like I was there just to take pictures. And going on things like Collier River Rapids where there's water, or going on Splash Mountain where you're going to get wet. Um... I found myself terrified constantly that this thing was going to get soaked. The camera I'm filming with is waterproof. I don't have to worry about that mess. Plus, since we're talking about a uh, point and shoot, um, it's automated. It helps uh, on the fly for me taking pictures because the camera does a lot of the work. Um, you know, I still have to frame it properly. I still have to pick what I'm shooting. It's not going to tell me where to shoot and how to shoot. But what it's going to do is it's going to try to adjust to give me the best settings possible in the current lighting. Um, all your digital point and shoots will do that for the most part. They all have computers inside that will help you adjust for settings and have automatic settings. Uh, when you get into uh, film point and shoots, um, this one for example does not. Uh, in fact it doesn't have the ability to zoom or anything like that. It's you move the camera until you get the right focus and the right view and you snap the shot. Uh, this one right here has the ability to zoom and focus um, so this is similar to the digitals, but you're shooting film. So I keep talking film and digital. What's the difference? Is there a really big difference? I'm sure people are asking. Here's the big deal. All right. When you deal with film, 
Uh, film is where this is all where photography came from. So it's going to have a look to it that you're not going to get with digital. Um, there's a romantic notion about film. Um, you know, people who've done film for years, they love film. Um, but here's the catch to film. Film, it's not like digital where you can just shoot, 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 shoot. Unless you have a million dollars, uh, you can't just keep shooting because every shot you take is money. It costs money for the film. Um, so you have to, when you take a picture with a film camera, you really have to think about what you're shooting. Because once you press that button, you can't re-record over it. It's over. You took it. It's done. Uh, so you have to think about that. You also have to keep it stocked full of film. You have to have film. So that costs money. You have to, keep, you have, to have rolls of film to take it there. Um, what happens if you don't have enough film? Well, then you're stuck buying film at Disney. And I would not recommend spending that kind of money on film at Disney. Just saying. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is film has a shelf life. Uh, once it goes out of date, the, the picture quality starts nose diving fast. And our tricks is, there are tricks to expanding that shelf life, like putting it in the freezer. But still, you're dealing with something that's not shelf stable, that's not stable for long periods of time. Uh, you're dealing with something that costs money. So, although I love film cameras, I generally don't use it use film unless either A, I have to use film, or B, if it's a situation where I'm making money and they want film. Uh, digital, um, particularly for family trips, is really, in my opinion, the best way to go. Uh, you can delete messed up pictures, you can take as many as you want, as long as you have room on the memory cards, you can fill it to your heart's content. If you bring your computer, you can dump those memory cards every night and, you know, have, you know, your, a free memory card for every day you go. Um, here's one thing though with digital, somewhat with uh, film as well, this one for example it would fall in this category as well, um, digital cameras you need to make sure you're charging your batteries every single night or you're going to be up a creek at the parks. Uh, charge your phones, if you're going to use your phone for a camera or for anything else for that matter, charge your cameras every night. So make sure that way when you go to the parks, you have full charges and everything. Um, because if you're whipping it out constantly and taking pictures left and right, you're going to burn through battery power and you're going to want to have that. Um, so it's a thing to keep in mind that you need to charge it. Um, another thing, regardless of what kind of camera you decide to use, you want to make sure you know your camera. All right. Uh, a lot of us, you know, we're going to Walt Disney. We're going to some major trip. Ooh, I got to have a brand new camera. It's going to be awesome. It's going to have all these bells and whistles. It's going to be sweet. I got it the day before I went. I can't wait to test it there. Bad move. If you don't know your camera, you're going to take a slew of horrible pictures or you're going to miss great pictures because you're learning your camera. So what I would recommend, if you're going to buy a new camera, that's fine, but get it a week or so before you go. So that, and get your butt outside and take pictures during the day, during the night, and get a feel for the settings, how it reacts to things, how quickly the shutter snaps. You know, you don't want to take a picture of something on the parade and miss it because the shutter takes two seconds and you thought it would instantly snap. So take your time to actually learn your cameras and what they can do and what they can't do. Um, other helpful hints um, with cameras is to pay attention to angles and framing. Um, you know, you pay attention when you're looking through your um, camera. Pay attention or looking at the screen on your camera because some cameras are like that. Uh, pay attention to what's in the foreground. Uh, pay attention, you know, is there somebody's head in the way? Somebody's hand in the way? Um, you know, not everybody's great at computer editing to edit things out. So do yourself a favor and just try to take a second. I know you want to take that picture of the tree. It's so awesome. But take your time. Make sure there's nobody photobombing you. Um, and yes, I use the term photobombing. Sue me. <laughs> But, you know, take your time to look at the foreground. Uh, along with that, pay attention to light. And, and the camera will adjust as best as it can, especially if you're using a digital point and shoot. But light is light. And if you don't adjust for it and you don't handle it, um, you're going to have horrible pictures. It's either going to be washed out or too dark. Uh, always try to take a picture where the sun's behind you and illuminating the thing that you're wanting to take a picture of. Because if it's above, then you're going to get this dark shadow going down the front. Like say you're taking a picture of somebody, the sun's hitting here, the face will have a dark shadow going. If the sun is behind them, 
then their body is blocking out all the light. So their body will be really dark. Now the camera might be able to edit and take care of it, but you just won't get the picture that you thought you saw. Uh, so pay attention to where the light's pointing um, and, 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 and do your best to do that. Well, keep in mind, yes, cameras have a flash. You could theoretically light that center body up, but in the daylight, flashes only work so well. And even when they are working at their peak, they're talking 10 to 15 feet of light. And you know, sometimes they can actually put too much light on something and you know, you make people look like ghosts. So um, just take your time, pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to your angles. Um, when in doubt, uh, if you're looking for a great shot and you can't figure it out and you just wanna do the generic family shots, um, there are things called Kodak photo spots. Uh, they're through the parks. Um, you'll see a little yellow sign at these points that say Kodak photo spot. A lot of tourist type people will know where that's at and they know to look for them. Uh, so you probably see somebody already there taking pictures. Um, these spots were, t were chosen by professionals at Walt Disney World, people who do photography for a living, as to be great locations to take pictures of the major landmarks. Uh, the Epcot Spaceship Earth Ball, um, the Tree of Life, Cinderella's Castle. Uh, these points are proven points to always, not always, but almost always get perfect pictures. You know, dreamlike pictures that you would kill to have. Uh, they're great for taking pictures of the uh, icon itself, or uh, you know, great for just taking pictures uh, with a family in front of it. Um, and there's tons of great points throughout the parks at the rides um, that you can take pictures. You know, signs for the parks. Um, you know, for other rides, there's usually some kind of a. Most of them have some kind of either a sign or some kind of a statue or special area talking about the ride, uh, like the, re the coral reefs over at uh, Epcot, they have like the Finding Nemo family essentially swimming by that you can go take pictures with the characters. Um, so keep that in mind, that there's always those options out there. Um, you know, there's character experiences throughout the parks that you can take pictures of the characters with, you know, family. Um, and another option is, you know, one thing, another thing, that option, Another thing to think about is there's the curse of the photographer. Uh, the curse of the photographer essentially is that the person taking the pictures is never in the pictures. 90% of my pictures, I am not in them. Um, and that's because I'm the one taking the pictures. Uh, I don't think I'm overly photogenic, so it's not a huge deal, but I wish I had more family pictures. And I wish I had more pictures of me that aren't selfies. Um, no, I don't take a lot of selfies, just for the record. Um, but my point is, I wish I had more. Uh, and when I last went to Disney World, I didn't know this little trick. Now I do, and now I'm going to share it with you. The PhotoPass photographers, which I'll get into the PhotoPass services and all that in a few minutes, but they're the professional photographers, they're all throughout the parks. Um, they will take pictures of you with your camera. Okay, yes, they're there to take pictures with their camera to sell you their services. That's their gig. But if you ask them, say, hey, can you take a picture of us? Here's my camera. They'll take a picture of you. Now, they don't know your camera, or they might not know your camera. Um, you know, they're, they're probably very adept at this camera, but they might not necessarily be adept at this camera. Um, but they're pretty much professional photographers. They'll be able to take a decent picture. Um, so if you're taking all these pictures and you really want to have family pictures at some of these great points, Generally, there's a PhotoPass photographer near one of those Kodak points. Why? Because they are there because that's an area where you can get great pictures and they know people are going to want them. So if you're wanting to do a family picture and you don't want to be left out of the family, like I am on many of my pictures, just go up to a PhotoPass photographer and say, hey, could you take a picture of me and my family? Here's my camera. And they'll do it for you. Um, so that said, uh, before I get into the PhotoPass services and the memory maker, um, I'm going to take a second. I have a, a brief little video for you guys. Um, it's basically a, a slideshow with some of the pictures I took back in our uh, 2011 trip. Uh, again, some of the pictures were taken with my D90. Some of them were taken with my Blackberry. Um, all of them are a lot of fun. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. Um, and that goes for both my good camera and my, and my cell phone camera. They both got good pictures. They all, both got bad pictures. But here's just a handful of some of the pictures I took. I hope you enjoy and uh, we'll be right back.
glad you you had a chance to take a look at that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so now that you've seen some of the pictures you can take, uh, again, I know some of them were blurry because we took them on the fly pretty quickly. Um, but they were just, like I said, it was just a, a, a handful of fun pictures to take. Uh, some of them turned out, I'm sure you, you agree, some of them turned out really well. Uh, some of them not so much. I, I really wish I had done a better job with the Zerg picture with my kids behind the, uh, the jail cell, but it's a cool memory. Um, so, to the professional services that Disney offers. Uh, PhotoPass photographers. Uh, they are professional photographers. They're all over the uh, parks. Uh, generally located at major picture taking points down Main Street, uh, over by the Tree of Life, uh, places where they know people are going to want family pictures. Uh, they're also located with all the character uh, meet and greets to take pictures. Um, and there are some at restaurants um, like Ohana. There's a photographer team outside, they'll take pictures. Example this right here, my family and I, one of the few that I'm actually in. It was really early, so I look really tired. Uh, so, um, they're all over the place. Um, and I won't get into Memory Maker yet. Let me get through the uh, we'll, we'll, let me get through the Photo Pass part first. If you're just going for the day or whatever, and you haven't done the Memory Maker, and you want to get a Photo Pass, what happens is you go up to one of the photographers and say, "Hey, look, I'd like to get my family picture taken. I don't have a camera. Not a problem. They'll give you a Photo Pass card. They'll scan it. They'll take your picture. They'll give you the card to keep." Now, every photo pass photographer you go up to and have a picture taken, take your pass out and they'll scan it. And basically what they're doing is they're tagging all those photos they took with you to that card. Uh, you can do that to some degree with the rides as well. Uh, so you go through the parks, you have your great time, you go home, you follow the instructions on the card, register online, and poof, all those pictures they took are right there online. You can buy them individually uh, and, and, and have them. Um, it's a more expensive way to go. But you can do it that way, especially if you're only wanting like one or two. Um, and you don't want to spend the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, the other option is to go through um, the Memory Maker program. Now, if you buy Memory Maker in advance, it's $169 currently. But it gives you all your pictures, period. All your um, ride photos, because it's attached to your Magic Band. And your Magic Band they track that so they know you're on the ride they, they can they try to key up your photos to your magic band and I believe you can actually go to the kiosk and, and tap it and make sure that it's uh, attached to your photo pass account so all your ride photos all your restaurant photos all your character photos all your photo pass photos anything they take is attached to your memory maker and guess what you can download them for free at home after that yes it's not for free you paid for it up front but you can have pictures taken to your heart's content and have a ton of family type pictures. Um, so that's one perk if you do it that way. Uh, it's 169 again in advance. If you uh, purchase it after your trip has started, it's 199 Now here's the downside to waiting. Typically in that first three days of the purchase, not every picture will always pop up because it's still processing, processing the system and nothing's not everything's been tagged. Sometimes you miss you lose pictures. So if you're going to do the memory maker, it's a great option, but you definitely want to do it um, before you go, at least a week before you go. So that way it's in the system, it's set to go. So when you get there, you're off and running. Everything's great. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're doing the memory maker. If you're, if you're doing the professional side of things, weigh the options. What's important to you? Are you just wanting one or two? photo pass will work or are you wanting every picture that they could possibly take of you so that way you don't have to necessarily lug around the camera what's ever is important to you um, I think our family's probably gonna do a mixture of both because I definitely want to be in pictures um, and I know that I'll definitely have photo pass photographers take pictures with my camera because I definitely get as many in there as possible um, I hope this information has been helpful if you have other questions feel free to ask me um, this is just kind of a brief overview, and I can give you know more depth question and answer type things if you guys uh, send me comments. Um, I do have a new piece I want to add to uh, the week. Uh, every week from now on, I'm going to put a question of the week. Uh, it's going to be a Disney related question, and uh, I invite you guys to read the question, uh, listen to the question, and comment below with your answer to that question. 
Uh, you can do it either via Facebook or through YouTube because it's going to be on both uh, places. Uh, and this week's question is, what is your favorite character? What's your favorite character? That could be Disney. Anything under the Disney umbrella. Let's, let's, let's clarify. What's your favorite Disney character? So that means it could be a Disney classic character. It could be a Star Wars character. It could be a Marvel character. Whatever. As long as Disney owns it, it's fair game. Okay? So, you know, think about that. Think about what your favorite character is. And I'd love to hear what you like. Personally, uh, I've mentioned it before in a previous episode. I have a hard tie between Sorcerer Mickey and Stitch. Both for different reasons. I love them both. Um, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think and, and what your favorite character is. Um, so, for next week's episode, um, originally I was going to do Disney Infinity. Unfortunately, my son will not be here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a preparing for your trip tips. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, stuff to remember to take in your bags, uh, things to bring with you, things that would be better off you spend at home, not there. Um, it's just kind of planning tips in general to help you set up your own thing. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit. Again, I said I would do a, a separate episode talking about why you do travel agents or not. Uh, I'll touch on travel agents a little bit, uh, but I'll make the travel agent part uh, a future episode because that's a broader topic and, and definitely worth delving into. Um, but yeah, so it'll be an opportunity to kind of go over what uh, you should and should not do as far as planning and uh, prepping for your trip. So uh, I'm going to end this as I've started ending all of them. Uh, Walt always said it best, uh, never forget, this is all started by a mouse. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.